y'all not coward. Y'all being real about what y'all doing. So. Another dose, man. You got high tolerance for this podcast medicine, so we're going to keep giving it to you, man. I go by gas to hate them, man. I'm Mr. Mean of the Instigator. You already know. Man, we got GDP in the building, man. I'm talking about fresh from the capital, man. What's good, brother? What's up, man? First of all, I want to tell y'all thank you. Facts. Shout out to me. I've been knowing me in a long time, but I want to tell you thank you, too, because I know it was a long time to get here or whatever, but I've been a fan since day one. Right, I said brother. that on other podcasts. I said it up. Matter of fact, I said it on Beehive, but they didn't put that part out. It's yeah. Another yeah, part right. when I was talking about the white tees and shit too, they didn't put that out when I was saying the hot boys were doing that way before franchise boys. But be how he put that out. But I want to tell you because I was I was up I was he one up on the nigga. Yeah, I was one up on him with that one, so they didn't want to put that one out. But shout out be high though too. Yeah, real um, talk. Um, but I want to say a part that wasn't on that I said before we even start. I had watched a lot of videos with you or whatever before. One time, I think you had, when you first started, you had a YouTube video and you was talking about how you was in and out of jail when you was young. And you said that you had saved up your money and you had bought like a lot of studio stuff. Right, right, you right. want to do something different. And when I started, I was like, man, that was dope to say that you bet on yourself. So I remember that even though you know, even though you probably never knew that. And I told Mina that before mm, or whatever. So right, I had right. been studying you like me and I always say I do a lot of research mm-hmm. I was even researching your ass right right that's what's up so, no, I appreciate <laughs> that, that my nigga that's what's ass. up that's what's up <laughs> dig and, and, and just to get into that before we start chopping it up and shit nigga I know right now uh, niggas hitting you up right now a lot of niggas been hitting you up since you've been moving how you've been moving lately right yeah and you done left a lot of niggas on scene nigga uh, well I ain't gonna lie it's like I didn't read a lot of messages, but it's some of them that be like some people just be spamming me to death. So right. some of them I just like I just I was like, damn, all they're doing is every time I turn around is a video, they're not saying nothing, they just fat spam. But for the ones that really be saying stuff, I really talk to them. I really like uh, get on there, like FaceTime and all that. I talk to them and all that. So for the most part, they ain't just spamming, 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 and they trying to talk. I really do try to talk to them. But some people I probably can't talk to because there's so many messages. But if they talking about something, yeah, I do respond. Damn, some like shit. That nigga just don't fit into the woo that you got going on to us, so it don't make you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, but it's all love, my nigga. Right, first right, hand, right, like right, right. it's all love. And I told me, man, we gonna get jaded. You know what I'm saying? We right. ain't get it, we ain't get you on there then. This better time is perfect time. It's a uh, better stage. Go on time. You know what I'm saying? Go on time. That's just what it is, man. Platform that's, bigger, right, right? That's what right, it right. is. We all got the same goal at the end of the day, bro. Y'all putting on for the culture, just like. Turk said, just like uh, Giggity said, whatever, and all that. And a lot of other people saying, all oh, y'all, baby said it. We all play our part. Right. All of us want the same thing or whatever. So, like I said, anybody that's from where we from, coming from the bottom, it means a lot to see you being self-made and all that. Like I said, Mina, with his knowledge and with you, it's like the yin and yang. Right. Y'all both compliment each other so well or whatever and all that. So, like I said, man, I, I, I'm a fan and a lot of people in the city fans too. Fuck. What you do, all this shit for as far as what you do, like... And, I, and let the people know for the people who watching our channel who don't know GDP what you stand for and what you what, what you do. Well, first of all, we were just at the state capitol building. Right now, this this April ninth, we just left from up there. See murder affected by this law. I mean, you grew up in Jefferson Paris, right. so you know how. I was just telling them at the Capitol, I was telling the senators, I was like, this the same Paris when we try to come over with, uh, what his name is, Harry Lee said, don't come over with these chiwis in y'all head. This the same Paris that David Duke was in, this the same Paris my brother got convicted in, and the same Paris Gretna, known for locking people, it's just bad, and I know you didn't see the first hand run up for sure. over on the side <laughs> right, or whatever, right. so you know better than anybody, but... I was talking about that at the Capitol. So we went up to the Capitol today. We had people that bust in from like Shreveport, Lake Charles, Lafayette, New Orleans. People came from Baton Rouge, came to the Capitol. And um, we all had on these T-shirts. And this law been around since 1893. It was implemented after the Civil War to silence black voters on the jury pool. So that means if we get 10, you win. And when my brother got convicted, my mama looked at his verdict. And she was like, well, they said 10 people said get the two, not get the... Well, this is a mistrial. And my mama lawyer, Jim Williams, which you might know, a lot of people know Jim Williams. Sure. He's a big-time attorney over here. We used to be a prosecutor, and now he's a defense um, attorney. Yeah. Um, and she was like, he was like, nah, that, that's a conviction over here. But anywhere else in America, that would have been a mistrial. So, you know, we was talking about that, and we went up there many, many times every year we go up there. 
And um, all those guys still said it was three. Say um, there was four, and four of them said no. So the bill didn't get passed. What, what what be the reason they keep saying no? The ones that is saying no. What what's the specific reason they keep telling you no know about? The main thing I keep seeing that they keep talking about is the money. They keep talking about it's going to put them in a pickle, the money, the money. But we like all these people y'all that made money off over the years. That Breaking didn't down there to what? Like the money to what? Like For why is it trying the cases? They like it's going to cost too much for the oh, states. Oh, retrying to, retry, all the cases? Right. And, we, and like I said, like I said before, this is not a get out of jail free call. We just want them to get another trial. A fair trial. When Bell went to trial with the um, Jason, um, with the, um, Will, Smith. Will Smith case, he at first he had a 10-2. And Jason Williams retried the case, and twelve people found him guilty. These people that sitting in prison, it was fifteen hundred. They say it's eight hundred now, and a lot of people that died over the years. Jason Williams then kind of looked at some of them, gave them deals, and you know they still got the conviction. But <clears throat> it's eight hundred people still sitting there illegally that the United States Supreme Court said is racially motivated. This was the Supreme Court said in D.C., and then the um, Louisiana Supreme Court. Still say we're going to let the legislators decide we're going to stay away from it. So we feel like we're in the 1950s. And it's all about money, but they could do these crime bills with Jeff Landry and come up with money for that. But when we talk about retrying these cases, when people could be sitting there innocent, they, they don't want to address they, that. They but I thought, I thought this, uh, the, the, uh, the court in uh, D.C. was over the... The it the is. That's the highest court in the land, the United States Supreme Court. But they say it's unconstitutional, and they say it's racially motivated, but they still going to bring it back to a lower court. So they just don't want to mess with it. And it's just like back in the 50s when you seen people getting dogs sick on them and hose pipes and firefighters and people hitting them with billy clubs. They was like, we're going to let Alabama be Alabama. We're going to stay out of Alabama business and let them good old boys down south run it the way they want to run it. And that's kind of how we feel like we back in the 1940s. But how can you bring it to the Supreme Court? Like, 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 well, why you can't get them to, to take it on? We or, did or, do it. And every time they do it, they deny it or they just say they going to let, you know, let it be what it is, whatever. And they're going to they gonna put it on the legislators. And the legislators can't do what their predecessors, their predecessors put them in this position even creating the law in 1898 and then they still can't fix it. So they cowards. And I was telling them there, I said, do what your ancestors didn't have the curse to do. Or do what some of your ancestors probably feel like y'all should do. Your great great grandfather, what he was wrong about, make his right, make his make wrong, his wrong right, right, right today. Because right, right. good people, they say bad things happen when good people don't step up. But one of the ladies that work at the Promises just said, she said, at least those people were, uh, at least they was bold enough to say in the paperwork that when they put the law together that they was racist and they right. was trying to be supremacist over a black race in the um, state of Louisiana, but they scared to say that. They don't want you to call them racist, but y'all racist on papers. Right. And and that can't be proven with no type of law or nothing like lawyer or nothing like that can't bring that to a light. The law. Or show, you know, like a case versus like, you know, uh, this person versus the state and this happened. Like, you can't use no other case to show that this is un, you know, they got unjust. they got laws that showing is unjust because, like I say, it's not twelve jurors of your peers. So automatically, like like Thurgood Marshall said in the seventies or the sixties when he was the Supreme Court justice, that is still not un by, by, beyond a reasonable doubt. So that's still a doubt of two people. At one time, it was nine three or whatever, and then in the seventies, it changed right. to ten, 10 two. two. So you had to have four people back then or whatever. Right. So you know, it was it all the game always been rigged. So I feel like the prosecutor's been. Putting people away, they've been sending people up the river like they've been doing. Because it's a for business. It's, we on the side money. of it like you're doing you wrong or right, but they're on the side of it. They don't see nothing but business and dollars. Right, and they see black people in jail, and we we got the highest incarceration rate on the planet. We 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 the lowest in education, but we lock up more people. So instead of us trying to find remedies, all we want to do is lock out way up out of the stuff. That same thing, Jeff Landrum. It, fe- it seemed like to me like I, my mom don't like when I say, it, but I feel like he like David Duke as a governor. Real talk. When 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 they shoot the shit down like they did today, like would be the next step. Uh, this shit got to start all the way over. Like, would be the next step. Of- they got to well, they got to try to reason with the DAs because the DAs they go. You know, a lot of them lobbyists get paid. So they they trying to be like, you look out for us. We gonna make sure y'all straight. So you gotta back us because Scra- we gonna back y'all. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Right. So the DAs be like, we we know it's wrong and we know it's morally not right. But what about all those victims and all? And like a lot of people be saying in the. It's not that we saying we don't care about the victims. We just saying these people need a fair trial. Y'all acting like we just saying that the victims don't matter. No, these people that they had one man 
said he got robbed and he lied it to his dad, a white man. He said, I lied it to my daddy that I got robbed by a black man because I was scared to tell you I was on drugs and it was my fault. But I blamed it on a black man. The man sat in jail 22 years. He sat right next to him. He said, this man sat in jail 22 years because I was a coward. But today, I'm going to be honest and say they probably got a lot of men and women that's sitting in prison just like this, but y'all will never know because it can't even come up because y'all got certain things that's um, stopping it from even seeing a dead light. Certain stipulations, right, right, right. How 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 often do they even take uh like you did today in consideration? Like how often? How every often every year, every year we go back and we well, try to year. come with more stuff and all that. Like usually, it take every year. We'll come back. We we'll all come to the Capitol. We we'll have these T-shirts on. We we'll have picket signs. They have the media out there, and we do it every time. And they do the same thing. They listen like they care. And they got a hold, and that's why I always tell them, do y'all have souls? How do y'all sleep at night right. knowing these people in jail unjustly? That's not right. fair. You do, is, that, that wasn't your first time, right? Nah, I didn't been so, up there. This is like my fourth or fifth time. What do you see it, it be different from time to time, from the time that you went? It seemed like, like today, it seemed like they be kind of like one of them, you would probably get one of them that seemed like they won't go the other way. You know, and then, and then they'd be like, no, they're going to go with the good old boys. The yeah. They're going to just be like, no, we, we, because they still be trying to please the prosecutors. They'll say, oh, we'll say all those testimonies, they'll be like about, feel like be like 30 plus people to testify. But once those prosecutors get up there and say it's going to break the state and we need money and how we going to use um, statements from dead victims that the police officers might be dead on these cases. But what about... Over 125 years, all the other men and women that died, that never got a fair trial. Y'all right. don't care about them at all. Y'all don't care about their mamas, their sisters, their sons, that they never got a chance to have a relationship with. They don't care. So if the vote was 4-3 uh, the opposite way, it'll it, 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 it it move or whatever. You know, it got to keep moving or whatever all the way till it get to that last step. And then I think it's like three stages, three or four stages you got to go through before, you know, it get that final pad. But then the governor can always veto it. He could still say, even though they did all this, I'm still against it. So it's just and, a hard fight that you got to just keep keep having faith in right. and keep moving forward. And hopefully, like I said, Louisiana Supreme Court can hear it again, but they can still deny it. It can still go up to the Supreme Court, but that might take so many years because they got so many other cases it's, throughout the country that they're that looking right. at. Fucking, uh... Damn, that's a crazy... Be, like, like, because I want to switch gears because I know they see, like, when... We jam up, right. you know what I'm saying? They want, they want, they want that shit, that new right. all this shit. So right. we are gonna get to that. Right. But the final words on the capital thing that that you went to, that you fresh from. What's your final words on that, man? Before we switch gears, I just really wish that they could do what their predecessors couldn't do and find it right this wrong, or whatever. I feel like they saved the people. We we went out there, we got people to vote in 2018. After 2019, you need 12 throughout all 64 parishes, but we still got people in the house that still need to be saved, and they still need at least a chance to be saved. They need at least need a, a raft to throw out there to try to save them, at least. So I just hope that one day they can find in their hearts, you know, to, to do the right thing. That's all. Did I you see about. any, like, this is the last question. Did you see any progress, meaning like it was three, four? Is it, have it ever been all seven or Six, you know, or, you know, yeah. like that, you know, or, or this look better or closer or whatever. I, I feel like I, I feel like it was a little closer this time. Cause like I said, it was one step closer. But like I said, it was still other things that we would have to get it through. But I felt like it was a little better this time. You know, a lot of people thought it was going to change. But, you know, it, they just still went with the same way. Yeah. You become, right. you, you, it get discouraging at times? Um. Yeah, cause you know you go up there, you see all them older women that you got sons and they love them and they barely can move. They in wheelchairs, but they out there and that means something to them. They got their kids, sons, and all that. Husbands on their shirts. So, yeah, I mean, it do it do really hurt you because you know it take a lot for these people to take off their business. They to come up there, but because of those people and because people that's not around no more, I feel like it's my due diligence to get up there and talk for those pri the guys in prison that can't talk. They're like, that mean a lot that you go up there and tell them Somebody, that shit right. that we can't say. Somebody got a, a voice for them, right? Right, so that's, that's what, what I do it for. That's what it is. Man, somebody just wasn't from down here and they hit up GDP and you had to describe New Orleans mm -hmm. from just a whole, man, from the media side, the blog side, the podcast, being in the streets. How you even describe this shit? From your experience I say our media is dope You know We, we building that Like I said What y'all doing With Darren doing with, with so many people Chuck Moolah is, is a lot of people I, I can't name everybody No people are Five stars like, But yeah. five stars It's a lot of them man For all the ones That's doing anything All the rappers um, the, the dope videographers I think is great The, the people that got Clothing lines That's doing Their own things Um 
uh, the models, um, the great food that we have. Definitely Everybody love food. our food around right. the world. The great music, the culture, the second line, right. the black medicine, the um, the the second line steppers. Like all, oh, I just think we got so much rich culture, yeah, right. and it's just like a big old great pot of gumbo. I think that's why accent's so dope and our music and is so influential throughout the world. I just. New Orleans is a dope place, period. Yeah, this, you, 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 not, you got a lot of knowledge, bro, about oh, a lot of shit, bro. About, <laughs> Shout out Buzz Down from, from the river. <laughs> yeah. You got a lot MCT. of knowledge, bro. Like, nah, I dig that. Right. Like, like sometimes, bro, nah, like, we'll, we'll be watching another nigga and we'll, you know, we'll, mm. we'll fuck with some of his ism, some of his woo, you know right. what I'm saying? But... We'll fuck with that nigga so much that we'll be forgetting the wooing ourselves. You know <laughs> right, what I'm saying? Right, right, Not right, real right, shit. Yeah, right, right. And, then, and, and on that type of time, like, nigga, you a, I don't even know what they call that shit, a hip hop star. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was, nigga, uh, y'all like, call it Albany. Like, he always tell me that. Like, y'all always say that. I talk to him all the time, feel I feel. Um, all those people, man. It's, it's so many people. Uh, Mr. Servon, Mina. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, the first person I interviewed by mm -hmm. my house. Right. Um, stuff like that or whatever. Like, it's just a lot of people, and I appreciate all of them. Like I said, from even what Mobile Joe did and what he was able to do with putting on um. Uh, what his name is? Um, uh, Ricky B. You know, with the shake, shake for your hood, it was all yeah, good. Right, mobile, uh, right. ch uh, cheeky black, cheeky black. You know, yeah. even bust down with the nasty bitch or whatever. On um, doing that, with fucking with Uncle Luke. So it's like I remember when I was young, I didn't know what Morel was at when I was like about six, seven years old. I remember he's being right. like, cruising down the street real slow because it reminded me of Easy. And in fact, I didn't know where the hell it was at Morel, but I liked that song. <laughs> right, right, so right. it's just like it didn't matter. Good music is good music, no matter where it come from. And I feel like all of us make a contribution. To the music from from like you said from 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 Buzz Down and them from uh from um man what my boy name is whatever man I can't think of his name on the tip of my tongue whatever Tim Smooth yeah. you know to just everybody on the other side of the river I feel like all us all them played a part in influencing us MC and Thick MC yeah. Thick you know um Trey A is a lot of them bro yeah, G right. Slim uh, it's a lot of people that we could be naming all day but you know all them matter and and all them. Wasn't in vain, so I still pull a little piece of all them and hold them with me when they, I'm standing on all their shoulders and stuff. Now I want to know this: how, how, how GDP get started and even going into the field of what you do, or what motivated you to go the route that you on? How, how did this all start for you? Well, first, you know, it came from the music executive stuff, and that's because I just love music. Because my daddy was a singer, and he was in a group with Lil Yacht, um, uncle. Um, in a group called the Mystics Uptown when they was younger. So I always loved music. He played Delphonics, uh, Spinners, Shy Light, Stylistics, the Dramatics, all this shit. So I grew up around it. Then my big brother, he listened to all this, you know, Easy e uh, A-Ball, MJG, Two Shaw, Spice, all this shit. So right. the music was always around me because you used to go I always go to Gimmick Records because he's seven years older than me when we was living in the Seven War. But the stuff with the blog and stuff, that come from Say Cheese because he had a pop-up shop and um, it was in uh, Sneaker Politics. And everybody trying to see, you know, what they felt like the problem with New Orleans was. And Sean had let everybody talk. I never got a chance to talk. And I got on um, Say Cheese and I said that New Orleans dude was trying to sound too much like Philly. And they were trying to sound like too much like Chicago. And we was biting. We was losing our way. And he posted. He kept posting. me, And that's kind of how it started. And I just kept getting posted after that. You came the voice of New Orleans. Kind of happened like that. <laughs> see, see, I, see I, 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 I've heard... I understand that side of it, but I heard it started way back in high school. Okay. You know, I heard that, you know, you was doing some stuff with the uh, f football team. Oh, you going way back, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, because that's the, that's the birth of, <laughs> the like, like, like of what you was doing. Almost like you was doing it on one side, but then became, you know. Doing what you was doing with the football? Well, what happened was I had a cousin named Charles Miller. He had the Calio Project. He was like, when Skylar Green was really hot at Higgins and shit, he was hot on the other side or whatever, and he went to Abe. He out to Cali, but he went to um, Booker T for 10th and 9th, but then he came to Abe's 11th and 10th grade year. 11th and 12th. 11th and 12th grade year, I mean, yeah, his junior and senior year. So I remember he had a pe uh, he was in the newspaper. They had his, like, his body, his bottom part, but they had him like running the ball, uh, throwing the ball, and like catching it. So he was getting all the football questionnaires, like him and his guy named Marcus Dillon. Marcus Dillon used to run in track with the twins that was in the um, fam game. Mm -hmm. God bless the dead. Um, for one of the twins, and um, anyway, they was in the. They used to get all the recruits, so the coach was giving them all the football questionnaires. So my cousin to get the questionnaire, he was living on Tyrell Lane. I'm like, damn, you got one for Florida State, LSU, USC. I'm like, let me call this number and see if they could send me some. 
So they mailing them to me in the cell while I'm telling the lady, could you mail me 10? She's like, all right, sure. Yeah. She sent them. <laughs> so I'm getting, I got, I got a, I got a book sack full of them. So I'm going to Abe on the yard. I'm giving everybody football questions. DNs, running backs, other dudes. So now, a week or two later, all the coaches getting calls. They're like, who is such and such? Who is Michael? Who is Ronald? Who is such and such Smith? Oh, Gregory, I was giving everybody a football question. What the fuck he giving them questionnaires for? <laughs> we ain't want them to, you know. It's like you're going over their head. Right. right, right so right. the dudes was like, damn, he really giving us the game. But everybody else was kind of like happy. But then someone was kind of like joking me <clears throat> with the um, coach was like trying to shit on me. And then one of the dudes was like, man, this dude helping y'all out. We wouldn't even know about this if it wasn't for him. Right. He really helping y'all out. And I was like, damn. So I was doing that in high school, getting niggas recruited, getting their own. Um, 40 times telling them how to send the SATs off faxing. I'm doing all this in 11th grade. We in the library when niggas supposed to be on the yard. We faxing shit off and all that. We sending shit. I'm helping dudes get, oh, man, your grade's kind of bad. You're going to have to probably go to JUCO. Like, I'm knowing this shit already. So I was doing that, then helping. All right, right, right. right. What, yeah. made you, what made you even get on that type of time? I just, I just felt like I, I just wanted to help. My mom and them always like that. Anybody could stay by my mom in the house. They cook right. for everybody. Everybody, could. my dad and them been having friends living with them when they was in their twenties. So they always help. So if we could help you, if people didn't know how to do their taxes, my mom would help them. If they didn't know how to read this, whatever, she was like, "Well, Miss Sheila, how to do this, whatever," and they'll just help. So we just always <laughs> like to help people. So it just, I always want to be an advocate. This is what I was wondering. I could, I, I had asked me to this. Uh, like with BTY, uh, rest in peace to him. Mm-hmm. But do do you see him up there, like a, a little baby, young boy? Like like where you where where you where you a rank it at? Man, like, hell yeah, right now. Man, <laughs> youngin would have been a star. Youngin really like like you know he lost his life you know tragically, but youngin definitely was destined to be a star. He had all the makings. The biggest, up. I think the biggest. Yeah, he, dog, the dude punchlines. Well, you say we buy it because we from you know what I'm saying, but I think he would, he would have been the biggest. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like he was dog. Like I, I feel like I'm a good judge of character and mean to know, right. mean to know too. Whatever, like dude punchlines was crazy. I remember I woke my mom up. My mom always be saying, "Greg, I remember you woke me up at four o'clock in the morning." She thought something that happened. She like, what's, "What's going on? What's going on, baby?" I said, "Ma, I can't sleep." I said, this dude is really so special. I said, I've been listening to his YouTube videos. I was listening to his music. And he rapping with a dagger in his hand. And his cousin was behind him or whatever. And mm-hmm. I think that's the video that he got on Poker on there behind him too or whatever. I'm like, dog, this dude crepe with... So I just knew he was special or whatever. And he had everything. The way he... Um, his, his his demeanor was when he shooting right. dice. Remember when he was shooting dice? He just... Like DMX, it was like that DMX Pac attitude. Right. How it came to end with you and him? Well... What happened was... No, before it came to an end, like, how, how it got started. Like, let's, let's go there. Okay, first how it got started, uh, my cousin Raymond, like me and I said, that was true. Me, um, My cousin Raymond Fat Mac, that's the one that had the label 0 to 60 with S80, the youngest one. Super Blanco was his first artist from Squad Up. So when Soup went to jail, and we were still doing... Jaded Youngin, huh? Jaded Youngin, well, he wasn't... He was dealing with Jaded Youngin. Though, yeah, he was really dealing with... Um, F, uh, F, F, Fame. That was his artist, but, you know. Yeah, but I had yeah, been told... To but listen, I had been told Ram about um, uh, Jaded Youngin first. I told him way about him first. Yeah. He wound up getting famous, but I was like, he the one. Right. Way before he even knew about him, whatever. That's facts to it. You just got something that nobody don't even know. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> So, um, but he wound up getting which one coming. I kept saying, this is the one that was a pick of the litter. But anyway, um, God bless the Jaded Youngin. So anyway, um... Raymond um, was on um, post to sign or whatever. So at the time, he was like the youngest one was kind of like he was, he was working with him, but then he didn't know if he was going to keep going forward with him or whatever. So I remember me and S8 was in the studio because Aiden made a lot of great beats. I remember he told me, uh, me and him had that don't think I just spit that shit on his computer and young and rapped on it. He wasn't even had permission. Right. Aiden said he killed it so much, I was like, fuck, I can't do nothing about it. Now, nah, he killed it. So anyway, um, me and Aiden was in the studio making a beat for the youngest ones that once upon a time in the projects by uh, Ice Cube. I'm like, man, you could do that for the same, but no, kill him. So, but I was still getting to make beats for Youngin too. So Raymond was supposed to get Youngin out of jail, but he didn't. He was doing the stuff with him and I was already in Joe's mode with him. Joe's my brother. But, but, but you, you, you ain't met uh, youngin on the street. No, no, at, I, that, no. At, at this time, no, I ain't never met him. Met, no, no, I did meet him on the street one time when I met him. When the first time, oh, all right. So when the first time I met him, he came to the studio with um, Super Blanco was over there. Cause Super yeah. Blanco had a song before um, he went to jail. Yeah, yeah, he, he went over there by right, Raymond. Right. He went over there by uh, Raymond. Yeah, I think he did a song with Super Blanco. I think it was in this thing, and then Youngin did a song for the youngest ones when he was on. Um, uh, it was on. Um, um, 
a song about they were smoking weed or whatever and all that. The youngest one. So he came in the studio that time and he was real cool. He dapped everybody off. I'm like, man, who this dude is with the ball here with Timberland on? Nigga, like DMX or something like that or whatever. But he really didn't say nothing. But when I heard his music, I'm like, God damn. Mm-hmm. So that was the first time I heard him. But when I heard this shit, I'm like, oh man, he just talking about spinning and beef and all this. Kind of was like, I ain't really want to just hear all that all this. So I was like, yeah, he just could just rap like that or whatever. So one day I got some more music and then I heard like um the song, the Cinderella song. And then I heard Dear the mama. um their mama um that he did with uh, uh Kango. He did with Kango, but who made the beat on um, my boy, man? Um Smith. C Smith. C Smith made the beat with him. So when I was here, I'm like, oh, he could show his vulnerable side. So I'm like, okay, he do got range with Then I heard him on the bounce shit that they let me hear. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Raymond, I met him in the studio at the time, but then that was that. Then he wound up going to jail on a Tim Murder. So Raymond doing the stuff with him, whatever. Raymond was like, he was going to sign him, whatever, or do some business with him, or whatever. Why he in jail? While he was yeah. in jail, or whatever, yeah. So uh, he was pulled up, I finished, I guess, paying the lawyer, however, with, I don't think Raymond had finished doing that. So Young had kind of got upset. But at this time, I'm putting money on the phone. I'm talking to him because I'm already doing this with my brother. I'm doing this with my yeah, other cousin. Mode, you see. Yeah, so I'm already doing this or whatever. I've been doing this, so it wasn't nothing for me to do that for him. So we had got locked in. I'm working at Mr. B's. And um, Young and had, uh, Young and wound up copping out. Young and kind of got a little frustrated. He was like, man, I don't know. Raymond going to pay the lawyer. These people trying to give me 50 years. So Young and copped out and he broke it down to like an aggravated assault or some shit like that. And he wound up doing like three or four years or whatever. So. The guy that was the victim, he wound up getting killed. I heard by police officers or whatever in the store or something. Mm-hmm. I think they said, yeah, he got the guy yeah, got, got killed. killed. Police killed him. Right, killed him in the store. But Youngin already had copped out. Now, Youngin probably uh. wouldn't have did it, um, cop- copped out, right, even right, came, right. Home. came home. Right. But he wound up already taking the time. So he went up. So I guess he was a little a little bit of disappointed with Raymond because he felt like my cousin was supposed to you know, finish doing that. And that's why he wouldn't have took the deal and went, you know, took a cop out or whatever. So he was like Well he so felt I, like Raymond Didn't keep it real with him oh, I guess oh, 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 I mean oh, Didn't handle it fast enough He just yeah he just didn't feel Oh cause like, that's why He copped out Yeah right Because right, he right. felt like He was the procrastinating lawyer. With whatever yeah Right he, he felt like He didn't move quick enough To finish paying the lawyer Where his lawyer Would have really like Represented right Cause the lawyer Was kind of like You know when you Don't pay him right, 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 right. They ain't gonna go hard for you So Young like Man fuck it I ain't about to play With Laurie White I'm about to get out of the way I'm gonna um, go ahead And take this deal or whatever. So he took the deal now, in the midst of that, I'm getting his CDs. I'm getting music from, from uh, me and them and, and um, Jitter Menace. I'm getting me, music from Styles, his cousins, and all that. They give me Miss Gabrielle. Miss Gabriella gave me the first CD as mama wow. at court at the courthouse. So I took those songs and I kept on redoing it or whatever and putting it the way I felt like I wanted to sequence it. And then I figured out how to sequence it good, like with a song with Deuce and these other songs. And um, I'm gonna that block was, it out, man. Go get that boy. So you want, you know, keep yeah, on yeah. Side. So I had um did that or whatever. So once I did that, um, I put it on that piff, and I put the music on. I got the CDs. I got the CDs from Atlanta. Got the cover made by his cousin Rizzy. And he in jail. He don't he even know all this happening. Well, I was telling him I'm gonna be doing this. I got the CDs. I got a real cover. I drew a logo up or whatever because I seen he had an AK-47 on his chest. So I took that and I was at Mr. B's. When we was on break, because that Mr. B's work doubles. So I'd go to Mr. B's, I'd sit in the little area, my lapine, still remember what I was doing. I was drawing it, and I drew the AK, and I took the music notes, like Rootless Records, like Easy mm-hmm. Logo, and I implemented right, that. Right, so right. that was, if you look at the original Rider music, it's got the Rootless Records type font, but it's Rider music, and it got, whatchamacallit, now Youngin, I'm one time in the it was like, well, man, how you know if I want to make it Rider Music Entertainment, a Rider Music, a Rider Music group? Like, you just made it that. I was like, well, I didn't know I just made a logo, young. I mean, if you want me to change it, I could or whatever, but I just didn't see you had a logo that young I was saw. Young was tripping on that. You know, so, so he was like, well, that shit do look good or whatever. And he was like, we're going to go with it. But, you know, he like, at least, he said, you you trying to at least do something. I guess, you, he, I said, man, I got I to gotta make shit happen. I got to make it look good so I can put it on the seat. So I did that. And then um, we came up with the shirt ideas. Was coming up with the different pictures. The picture that Miss Gabriella got is our main picture. Is one of the free youngest shirts. So I was gonna come up with a little drawing or whatever, and they didn't like that one. So Spooder and Youngin liked it. The other one that Spooder on um, Whitehead came up it was like kind of like an etch a sketch picture. But they voted that one, and I was like, all right, cool, y'all. See, that's what we're gonna go with. We did that. So I got the shirts out of Philly. Everybody wearing the shirts for um, second lines. So when Super Sunday come around, everybody- giving them away, giving them away. I was giving mine away. They probably were selling some of theirs, but I didn't care if they sold them or gave them away. I just felt like they were the word out. I just wanted, yeah, I want to get it out. So I'm like, all these CDs free. Me, nice. Um, sported sometime, but mainly me, nice, and, and young and big brother, big John. We big was John, out there for right. Bayou Classic. Linda Fillette ran up to me. GDP, bro, I like what you're doing, young and my favorite rapper. 
You know, that was in 12th grade that year, whatever. St. O, he remember. He was out there. He took a picture with me. We giving the CDs to dudes from the call. From the call. I got youngin' on the phone with dudes from the call. He rapping on the phone to him. Them little dudes going crazy or whatever and stuff. So yeah. that was how we created the buzz. When youngin' came home, he had 10,000 downloads on a mixtape. And um, and that was all while he was out. And even when he had asked Mina, and I guess the guy that shot his videos, he was like, to get the videos. So every video I wound up putting out, like a video every three or four months. And I was on um, putting the, the album cover on the front and the album cover on the back. And I had a ticker at the bottom that showed you his Twitter. Right. So everybody knew how to follow him on Twitter. I remember Roy the Prince from, um, from out the third or out the Magnolia. He was like, man, who the hell is this GDP dude? Like, I don't know where he came from, what he doing. He was like, I got to meet him. And I gave him a shirt right down Carrollton by the Wendy's. And then I met Styles through him out the Fisher. Right. I let Styles record his, most his, yeah, most of his mixtape at my house tonight while I didn't charge him nothing at the time. They was all in the group. Styles really wasn't the main one out there, like as the main face of the of the, of the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. When he did that mixtape, that industry read it, that kicked it all off, and him being tied to Youngin too. Styles was holding Youngin young down at that time too. How yeah. he was in jail? He met them in jail, huh? No, I think Styles had been. I know. I don't know how Styles and Youngin met. I mean, I know they was Youngin was doing stuff with Juve and Fisher. I Nina probably know about that better than me. But I, when I met Styles, he knew I met him through Youngin. Right, and like right. I said, Youngin had got me to do his stuff. He like, man, fuck with Styles, you know, with his music or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna let him record everything over here. I didn't charge Styles nothing. I remember him and Goonie before he passed. They was coming get the rest of the sessions to go get the engineer to mix it and all that. And um, cause he had to do his album release part or whatever. And ever since then, Styles been coming with that heat or whatever. But I did that on the strength for Youngin, and I didn't like. I ain't never say, man, you got to pay me for studio time. None of that. No, and, all, and the whole Youngin project. Is, and Youngin in jail at this time. Youngin was still in that's jail. Bro, you a good nigga for that. Youngin was in jail. Nice Guns was doing stuff for him. Nice was that's how Youngin and Nice got cool through me because Nice was working at um, Galatoire's at the time, um, washing dishes I think, and I was a bank with at Mr. B's. So we was all ride for Youngin. We was like getting this stuff out there, doing videos and all that. Yep. You, you when 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 you doing you doing this anticipating, man, Brody coming home. I know right. well, he knew fact. he was coming home. Right, right, yeah. right. We, Everybody knew. We all knew he had a time to come home. Mm-hmm. So we knew he was coming home. You know, just to break it down a little, understand it, because some people will probably look at like, well, I, I remember Mina was working with right. with Young. So when me I was working young. with Young, you know, we was doing the mixtapes and putting things together. We did me and my Young and, right. you know what I'm saying? We did uh, the Rider Music, the first little, little project or whatever. Mm-hmm. Testimony, huh? Testimony, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So he, he was like more like... Uh, when he went to jail, me and him used to have a, a, a pact to a level where if he like, if I go back to jail, bro, I mean, I don't love you, bro. I mean, I ain't really serious about this shit. You know, like, you niggas be talking that shit prior to going to jail, but when he went to jail, we talking on the phone. So somebody must have gotten his ear, like, you know, they selling your music, making money off you while you sitting in jail or whatever like that. So, you know, out of respect for youngin', we just took it down. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take it down. In the mix of that, that's when Raymond came about and was saying... Look, I'm going to sign him. Like, if y'all ain't going to do nothing with him, i work with him. Right. I guess him and Raymond was talking. So I, I, I'm like, I give all the music to Raymond. It don't even matter. Like, he came over or whatever, gave him, like, no, some shit. I understand shit. the timeline. And line. it went that route, you yeah. Work, you worked with him So before I worked with him, yeah, met, yeah, before he yeah. met GD. And then um, then GD, whilst he was in jail, GD was doing everything that he mm-hmm. just spoke about. You know what I'm saying? Which me, I had kind of backed off due to... The agreement we made, like, I ain't fucking with it no more like that right. to that degree. So I just wanted to bring some clarity in it so they can understand Time how it went the timeline Time. of it. And yeah. then I'm going to go back to this, too, even because I just thought about what he said. When Young and first wrote me a letter, he wrote me in red ink, and he was like, I know. I still got the letter, too. I, I showed it on video, Wayne thing and all that. He said, I know writing in red is disrespectful, but I feel like I'm writing you in blood from my heart. And he, that's when he wanted me to be his manager. But at the time, I'm just doing this stuff, but I wasn't putting my money. The more I'm going to put money in, I'm like, well, damn, I'm not just doing manager stuff. I'm like putting money in like. See your like, shit? Yeah, just like Andy Murray and Soldier Slim. If you look at the cutthroat committee, you see Andy Murray, Soldier Slim. You look at Nipsey Hustle, you see Nipsey Hustle, Black Sam, his brother, you see Fats, you see Adam. All of them was in all money in, no money out. Right. T.I., Jason Jeter, the manager, Toomp, the one that make the beats for 24s, T.I., the rapper. T.I. didn't come up with the name Grand Hustle. It was Jason G, the management company, but mm-hmm. T.I. didn't have a name, so they came with that. Russell Simmons at um, Winchester Dormitory in NYC. Get with Russell Simmons. They start Dev Jam. So you get the idea. So when I'm doing it, it's like me splitting him. That's what he's telling me at the time. But when we got out, it was a little different. But before that, everything was cool or whatever and all that. And we was, like I said, still doing everything, and I'm... Doing it while he in jail, and then when he got out, that's when we kind of like 
it, it instead of getting that loan after he got out of them. Yeah. So what from that right there? Because well, we had manager, a manager. Uh, you were talking like I look at it like you, it should you just explain. We had a, we had a meeting, right? You know, so oh, y'all, y'all, yeah, yeah, all us. Like you know, so young when he get home, he called me and he was like, "Man, where you at?" Like I'm like I'm at the studio in the east. So he was like, man, come up here. What it was it? 11, 11 Wall? Like it was 11 Wall. Yeah, like, come, nice come over here by these people or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I want to have a meeting with everybody. GD was there. All of us was there. The whole Tito was there. Tito, Only one thought he had Big John, but they didn't yeah, John John. Was, yeah, John was there. God bless their Tito so, was there, too. So in the mix of talking, you know, they GD was explaining, like, listen, bro, you know, when you going to, like, so they starting up. Tell people the positions they gonna have. You gonna do this. You gonna yeah. do that. And and, and, and GD, you and Mina. Mm. Who's saying this? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's saying you and Mina can get together and y'all. You know, I like. You know, I fuck with both of y'all, so I mm. want y'all to to be management. Right. So you know, GD was like, nah, bro. You're like real talk. He was just like straight up. He didn't hold no punches. He right. was like, nah, bro. I thought you know. We was doing this shit like right. you know I'm I'm CEO I'm like with the company I'm right. like you know I don't want to do no management right. you know what I'm saying so I was letting GD know listen bro I don't got no problem with you I'm right. gonna just play because I don't want to do management right. I don't want to do nothing want, oh, right. I just want to be mentor like mm-hmm. big brother like right. I ain't trying to I never Fully wanted involved, to be man. manager from the beginning of the whole thing of working with Young and I just gave Gabe Bella my word that I was gonna do right by his son and put him on and, and help him with music right. I never wanted to do management so right. when he was saying that I'm like Young I help on I assist this brother on anything that he's doing but he didn't want to do management because I understand his position mm-hmm. first I didn't understand it back then because I was looking like that's what you was doing anyway huh? Mm-hmm. but like he said I was thinking more like nigga I'm like CEO with him. I'm putting my money up mm-hmm. with this shit so he just he didn't give too many words he just was like I'm not with that so I, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna leave like mm-hmm. little people getting there GD you tripping like mm-hmm. you know talking GD like you know what bro I'm just gonna leave mm-hmm. so GD left and it was just more like me and you gonna do what I'm like, well, I ain't managing, bro. Like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm still gonna anything you need, I got you, contracts, anything that you need assistance right. on, I'll help you with that and, and and go from there. So that's pretty much where it started running from that position after G D like moved itself from it at that at that time. That was the, the last time? Well, the thing I'm gonna say it was three things that happened that really was the I guess what you might say, the straw that broke the camel back. Um, the first time, if you look on YouTube, they got a video when Rocco was, when Younger was rapping for Rocco. Now, mind you, the Preston and Derek Dalk, they brothers from Terrible in Paris, they from Homer. They shoot videos. They shoot yeah. videos, whatever. So I had them doing Nice Guns first video. Nice was the artist I was working with that told that Youngin told me and us, Nice is my artist. He ride the music, but, but Nice was really my artist. Nice got the ride the music tattoo on him that I drew or whatever. You know, Youngin wound up changing the logo right before he passed. He made it just RMR with the records, whatever. But, mm-hmm. The original was the one I had, came up with, and Nice got it tattooed on his hand. But he said, Nice, you're going to be the manager, man. Splitter, we're going to be the owners, just us two. And GD, you could do the stuff with me and with the management. But like I said, I'm putting my money in. And this is Mr. B's money. I'm not, this ain't no street right, money. Right, right. I'm working my ass off. Just like how you said when you was doing the stuff, that shit ain't easy to come by. So I'm putting my all into this shit. Just like Coach K said, Coach K said, man, just do all this stuff. And you get fired like how G's or Gucci kicked him to the curb. He's like, man, if I'm do it. Russell Simmons said the same thing too with Curtis Blood. why he did what he did. So anyway, when Rocco was rapping, Young was rapping to Rocco. So Preston had, after the, Rocco finished rapping, he's like, who I need to get information because I'm going to be back down for the Saints in Atlanta game. So he got my number. Then Sputter, Young and Brother, I've been on Sputter. We used to live around each other on Tyler Lane, Young and Big Brother. So... Sporter um so Sporter got his number. I said, huh, Sporter, you could have a number two or whatever. So I'm not tripping. I gave him the email, everything, young and password or whatever. Cause I'm like, you know, you could do the same thing I'm doing or whatever. I don't got no problem with that. So when Rocco wound up coming, he had said, I said, um, I said, well, met at the casino. They met at the casino or something or whatever. I don't even know where they had met it. I just know I called Rocco and I said, well, what happened? Whatever when y'all he said, I already had met him. I said, met who? He said, I already met up with them or whatever. I was like, well, damn, like uh. I'm saying to myself, like, whoa, so okay, all right. So <laughs> Right, no, real talk. I, 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 it, 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 really, it really did hurt, bro, because I was like, damn, I'm like, you know, I I so I was like, all right, cool. So then that's why when Young and Head kept trying to do the meeting at first, they had been trying to get me because I was, the, I was the main person that they wanted to be there. But the first time they wanted, I was like, man, I ain't coming to me because I was already feeling like they, it was like it wasn't fair to me or whatever. So as I know what he told me and I know how I've been putting my money and my time and all that. And just like he told me, he said, bro, I know if this was Young told me, he said, I know if you had the money like Raymond, I would have been got out. And Jay Merck told me the same thing. A lot of people know that because they know my heart. I don't care right. about money. I never did or whatever. Like, I know I'm going to get paid one day for doing what I do good because I love it. But it wasn't about that or whatever. I just right. love to do what I do. So that happened. 
Then we had the meeting with me and them, and then I said that, and then that happened. I was like, then I called his brother, and I remember Tito was looking like, man, what's going on? Because Tito was yeah, like, he was more lost. Than yeah, because like, he was like, man, I know G the good dude. Like, what's going on? Like, why he feel like this or what's happening and all that? They thought you was tripping. Yeah, yeah, and Tito was trying to figure it out, or whatever, and all that. So I had left him when I talked to young and other brother, Big John. He was like, man, they didn't tell me about the meeting, what happened, why they did that or whatever, and they didn't even call me or whatever. I was like, I don't know. I guess they didn't really want you there. I don't know. So. I had so that happened. So I'm thinking about all that. I'm pondering about that. So then, I um and like I said, no, no, this ain't to make young look bad because I love. We yeah, gave right, you a right. chance, believed in me too. But I'm just telling you my side yeah, of the story, right. my truth, well, how I remember it. And um, so then I remember my cousin Raymond called me on the phone with Chuck. I never knew who Chuck was. I want to find out that's ruler brother. Mm-hmm. So he was calling me to the extent like, well, we gonna take it from here. I need the password to this. I need this. I'm like, well, who you is? I never remember him even saying. <laughs> right, right. I never even remember him saying like, and I probably be wrong. He, he, I don't had, became, he, he had became the financial backer of what they was about to start doing. Right, but when Younger was in jail, I don't remember. I don't. I might have been mistaken, but I don't remember Young like, man, call my cousin Chuck. He gonna. Woo he didn't live in town. Okay, okay, but I don't even remember right. if he was calling him. On the phone, it was like that was the first time I've heard his name. Right. So he was kind <laughs> to, to, to give passwords and all that. that yeah, was, yeah. Right, so right. he was like, "Man, I'm his cousin. I'm doing this." And when he called on the phone, my cousin, I was kind of like, "What's going on?" Because I didn't know if my cousin was upset because he felt like I went ahead and did what I did with Youngin. Because later, my cousins, a lot of them, my cousin was on my ass. Yeah. Like not just my cousin Mac, but a lot of my cousin was feeling a certain way. But I just did what I did is being a music executive. It's like I'm about to get behind this dude. I believe in him wholeheartedly, and I'm in now, whatever. So. Even I, even some of my family members felt like, well, damn, like you rolling one over here, but I wasn't looking at it like that at the time, and I, it kind of created like some some, some I felt friction with y'all, right? Over the time or whatever, and we better not. I feel like it or whatever, and all that. I love my cousin, and like I said, we got the same grandma, you know. Um, but that was what it was, whatever. So he talked on the phone with Chuck, and Chuck was like, "Man, we're gonna, I'm gonna take it from here. We will give me this, that, and all that, and you know, we 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 gonna do it this way." So I was like, you know what? Y'all could go ahead and I'm going to just back up. And I backed up and that's when I started doing the stuff with my cousin Raymond again with 0 to 60. Believe, it, I, believe it or not, dog, from the football shit you were talking about to that right there to what you got going on today, all that shit, like, it got it for you to be where you at today. All, all that shit helped that. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. You might couldn't get the blessings when you wanted to, but it seemed like it's coming full circle for you. But how you even, like, linked well, up? Look, I want to say this last little part too, guys, because after that, Young and had wound up reaching out to me again through Nice, and we had met up. I went in P Town, and we had um, Nice got us to meet up or whatever. But when I met up with Young, we went set and went on Burger King on Bullet, and Young he didn't really want to tell me how. I guess like he was like, you know, Nice was like, man, you telling me you want Holly G or whatever, so y'all could talk and whatever, get an understanding, cause cause I know you really know he really had your back when you was in jail. That's what Young and kept telling Baby. That's how Baby got on me, cause Baby kept saying, man, Young and talked about how you kept it so real with him when he was in jail. You was looking out for him. And baby kept saying that's real shit. He said Young and talked so good about you. And even when me and Miss Gabriella went up there, that really made me feel good. She was like, you know, Youngin really did appreciate you. Even though right. I know y'all had y'all thing over that yeah. part, he really did appreciate yeah, what you did. He, he appreciated did. how you came up there to visit him with his mom and his dad and his sister noon. That's the only visit he got in Winfield. And it, and it was a hell of a ride. That car wasn't even running that good. I was riding my sister car, but we made sure he got that visit because <laughs> right, right. I know how much it meant for him to see his mom and his sister or whatever. So... I ain't never did no time in jail, but I knew what it was gonna mean to him. So I just want to say that or whatever that we didn't we didn't get that understanding. But I remember he had called me when he was about to do the stuff with Stunner. He reached out to me again. He asked me did I want to do it with him, and I was like, Nah, young, I'm gonna let you do your thing. I, I'm still a fan, you know. You go, I'm always thank you. One of the best rappers I ever heard. But I just feel like you know I'm gonna just let you do your own thing and just find somebody else to do that. I'm gonna just do what I'm doing. My cousin Raymond, and that's, that was the last time. And the last time I seen him was around this time. Right. French Quarter Fest. He gave me a bunch of CDs, him and his brother, um, when he was in the Audi. And he told me, could I pass him out? And I did that. And then, you know, that later that money got killed. Right, right. Taking this perspective, you're saying all that. Not not uh, the next young, but like you said, I did find somebody else. Mm-hmm. But even all that to the print of, well, who is the next person? I won't even say the next young, but who is the next person right now in the city? Uh, I like I like what YD doing a lot. I feel like he gaining a lot of... Traction of what he doing, him and Cam Beamer. Um, I heard a song him and BG did yesterday that was off the chain. So I feel like YD really like, you know, he making his bones. He doing a hell of a job. That's we already why, know that's Rob. That's YD the illest, right? YD right. this out the night wall. Um, and like I said, I feel like Jay Merck gonna be if he could stay out of jail. That's the one I met through Youngin. I mm-hmm. feel like if he could, you know, stay he out of jail. Now? No, no he's he in jail on a gun charge right now. But if he could stay out of um. 
That's who, that was he like the same Bernard when Youngin said the way I said it was that pussy she gonna think I'm about to be. That's because he was hanging around them and all like the same Bernard practice. Something about gangsta, he was talking shit. <laughs> no, he really he really feel like he's still saying, gee, that's so gangster advocate for you, but I'm still on giggity ass. So <laughs> <laughs> Gangsta you know, say you something mad or what? You just talking shit. He feel like that, but not nah, Merck feel like <laughs> Merck feel like that. I mean I, Giggy don't feel like that or whatever, but but um it's all cool. Like Giggity still says some good stuff for me or whatever, even though we had our little moment, but Merck style, that's that was Merck's position on that. Like I can't make like young. Like me and say young gonna rap about what he want right. Yeah, he's gonna try yeah. to tell him I don't know he's but he gonna yeah, be able to still do what he do, right? Mm-hmm. Right, 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 okay. right. For is though, like the A and R shit, like like you say, you got you got an ill for that shit. What it is with with Birdman? Because I know I heard you say that, like man, people be working on some A and R shit. Well, I know, like I said, I know YD told me that I did that. You know, young Birdman hit him up, and he was supposed to be, you know, trying to still put something together with him. And um, I even been trying to get Sean and YD po to be cooking up too, because Sean, Sean, Con- Sean kind of like YD a lot too. Baby supposed to be liking him a lot. So, Stunner, Stunner like Jay Merck too. Stunner was helping with Merck right. law, law, um, legal fees and stuff right. like that too. Yeah. So he was actually helping with his legal fees. So he liked him a lot when he met him in um, Miami when YD and all of us in the studio. I had bought a lot of people because look, how they, how that came about? Well, because Youngy, Baby said Baby had DM me around Valentine's Day and he was like, "Man, I, I see what you're doing, bro." He said, "BTY Youngin told me you kept it real with him behind the walls, and that shit meant a lot to me." So I really respect you a whole lot for what you did for him. And I'm like, I had been doing that, and I said, "Damn, I, I didn't know Young told you." He said, "Yeah, man, Young spoke really good about you." Mm-hmm. And um, I wanna, and I see what you're doing, the other stuff. I see you got it for it and all that. And I was like, man, you know, I didn't work with Super Bad, and you know, I've been around S80, so I've been around different artists. This is just one of many. And um, he like, you know, I won't try to put you in a position to help turn you up or whatever. So that's how that happened. And I went down into Miami. But even when I did that, they was like, you got all these people from downtown with you. So you don't fuck with Uptown. What, what, what made you bring all those people? Like, well, how, I know, how, how that got? It wasn't a limit. Well, it wasn't. say the limit. No, it, it wasn't. And Ms. Gabrielle, <laughs> when I was talking to Ms. Gabrielle and my mama, they was like, well, I think, you know, you still should try to make sure you straight first before you bring the whole house with you. Yeah, yeah, right. And I understood that and all that. But when he told me bring all this, I did. But YD rolled with a lot of people. It was damn. It wasn't like the Wu Tang, but it was for that. <laughs> for the way we was moving, it felt like it felt like he bought a whole Wu Tang with him. Like he bought the whole Staten Island with him. Damn near. Um, felt like in that studio because it was small, but it was a lot of people in those damn rooms and stuff. Um, yeah, y'all drove. No, we had flew down. All us had okay. flew down. All us caught the flights together. All us was on the planes together and stuff like that. And um, but everybody had different Airbnbs in different parts of Miami. But it was real fun, boy. Well, I got scrutinized for that. People, oh, man, you bought all them downtown dudes. You don't fuck with the, uh, Uptown. But when I was working with Youngin and Nice Guns, they from Uptown. When I work with Superbad, she from Kenner. I'm like, I don't see all that. My daddy from Uptown. My grandma, all. So it's like, it's they like ain't dumb on you. Huh? They ain't dumb on you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, it ain't, it ain't dumb on me at first, whatever. <laughs> but, 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 but when I when I saw it, I'm like, dog. I like, see what they, all this, That's dog. how they feel. Yeah, they could have yeah. bought four Uptown niggas and three up. Yeah. Man, why you going to bring one extra Uptown? Yeah, no. right, yeah. It's you always going to be a problem, right? Yeah, it, it, so it, it, I was it, like, it, you so. never could do enough. You ain't going to never be able to please everybody. Like Bumby said, you might as well please you and keep it 100 with yourself right. like the G's do. What so you, you think? What, oh, yeah. You feel like you put it all on you? Like 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 from what you're doing now, like it's like... You know, because you did a lot for different artists and things of that nature. But do you feel like the GDP Speaks whole little brand is about you and what you bring to it? Something for yourself? Well, I feel like I definitely feel like I play a big part in it. But I feel like the people help me. The people send me stuff. The people, uh, the artists mean a lot to me or whatever. So I always feel like they always, that's why I always let them say stuff. Like when they might, gee, this is how I feel about this. I let them chime in. A lot of Blogs that be having post pages like that, they don't really do that. So yeah. I always felt like if I let the people speak, it's like the people stays and the people give me the power. Say something about him, he putting that on there. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You talk about him, he gonna put that on there, right? They, they, yeah, they, well, they, they gonna probably say my name in it, but I mean, even if they didn't went and like told me, well, I don't agree with you on that, G, or whatever. I didn't post this stuff when people wasn't even agreeing with me or whatever. Right. That's what we that's what about. we talking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 it could be on right. the opposite yeah. side right. of you. If you say it. your name, right. I'm yeah. putting it on right, there. Right, right, and that's what I'm saying. And I, and I and I try to do that to still try to be fair. Or whatever, because I still want people to let everybody ain't gonna always agree with me or whatever. But the people in the comments gonna see how that person how they respond to. It. I'm gonna let you be on the summer jam stage and see how people respond to you or whatever. But I feel like <laughs> <laughs> always, always give the people the power because I feel like a lot of great things happen because the people made Amazon, they made McDonald's, they, they make made everything what it is. Yeah, right? it's like y'all stuff. The, the, the subscribers <laughs> that tune in that comment that's loyal to your branding. Like man, we roll them again, roll them. Me and women, fuck 
Whatever well, is them against the world. That's right. how it is. So <laughs> right. people put you there. So we on right. hey, TVT, we on right now. We from here on Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. We on right now, but we wanted to fuck with you in East Island. So right. you know, we and we premiering, we airing right now as we right. speak. Right. We'll be we'll be on that bitch. Consistency, we want, bro. We wanted to fuck with y'all, you know. Yeah, what but saying? consistency. We don't miss that bitch in the chat. We we fuck, right. we got some real, real people that fuck with us. Yeah, right. that's what I'm saying. They be hacking the dog in that bitch. That's that consistency, bro. I think that that's what it's all about or whatever. But like I said, I feel like you know, I'm doing great branding myself, but I feel like, you know, the people made a big part of it. Just like the stuff with Jeezy the other day, you know, shout out to David Hudson or whatever, because David do a lot of stuff. And I, I call him boss, man. He got a, he going to eventually run with the nickname or whatever, because mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, what he did, you know, BG reached out to me and, you know, needed help on what was going on, whatever, you know, fighting for his freedom, trying to stay out here to be to build his family and, his, and please his fans. And get back to his career. What David Hudson's position was in it? Uh, David Hudson played a big part or whatever. He was able to, like, get, like, call certain people or whatever to kind of talk to certain people or whatever to kind of, you know, ease up a little tension. Right. Um, he was able to get certain letters and all that and certain things, whatever that was going to be. That's, that's, that that's who you reached out to on, on the behalf of BG? Or, I reached or? out, yeah. I re- BG reached out to me, and he knew I had a, a good friend that was in a powerful position that could make things happen. Oh, that's what's up. And that's David Hudson. Okay. The Desire Project. So David was able to do that or whatever and be instrumental in that. So like I said, David and his cousin Darren um, was able to get us and, and Freddie King, that's a council member, they was the one that got him in the prison in the juvenile detention center to go talk to those kids. Like BG could have went hung with baby and right after he left out of the court. But BG was like, no, I'm going to go in there and do that. We was going to go to court at first or whatever. Um, but something happened with that. So we was like, well, look, David, like we got a better plan. We're going to go to juvenile jail and let him talk to them. And that really made BG day. And I let them know that he could have been anywhere in the world, but he here with y'all, and um, and they was saying how much they appreciate it. But like, give, give, give us a little insight of how that went. You know what I'm saying? Because I saw like footage of it, but but how that went. You know, BG was in there. You know, mm-hmm. he talked to the kids. How did they receive him? Oh, they was they was really into it or whatever, man. They was talking. Right. Um, they was the, the 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 young ladies was really happy. The ladies that work in there, um, the security guards, they was really happy. The staff, um, the young men was asking questions. They was like, "What y'all could do to help us when we get out?" And you know, how you feel about this? And BG was asking them questions, like you know, and they was asking like, "What we could do better?" Uh, why do y'all feel like y'all be so mad and angry? And where does that come from? And BG talked about if he would have listened a little more. You know, he was like, you know, I was a little hearted. I should have listened to my mom and Miss Cynthia a lot, and I wouldn't have been in the position. But I know because he lost his daddy young and certain things he mm-hmm. went straight. Right. And he was telling them, I see a lot of myself and y'all, and I don't want to see y'all go down the same road as me. I didn't see dudes get butchered to the ground over a soup. Something as simple as that, just because somebody felt played, just because somebody didn't like what you, how you said something, how you just looked at them. So he was like, y'all got people in here that care about y'all enough. Cause they giving y'all tough love, but once y'all get on that other side, they ain't gonna have that many people that care about y'all like that. They gonna just see y'all as a number, and mm-hmm. I'm trying to save y'all before y'all go down the same pitfalls I did, you know. But like I said, shout out to those major. guys for bringing them in there. That's big. That's big. That's that's dope. Cause 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 you 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 getting the information from a person who just who, yeah, exactly just like you five months home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's know, real. fresh, fresh. Gee, how, how you even like? Is it a transition or all that in one woo of the GDP speech from, like, the side of you was with Young and with mm-hmm. the artists and shit into, like, slash blogger, like? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess because I love the music. So that's why I say when I was able to do the stuff with Young and when I was able to be around S80, when I was able to be around Superbad and, and then doing the blog and stuff, I, I just love the music so much. So it's easy for me to blog and talk about music. And then I'm always been outspoken, like you say, long winded. Right. You know, my mama, <laughs> my mama, my mama, real real smart. She always is like the one like she gonna. My mama sued H and R Block when a lot of people wouldn't even think to do that or whatever. Because she was like, I know I got a case, and she did it, and she won our case, or whatever. When she didn't even need an attorney, you know, um, to do that or whatever. But she always been outspoken. She talkative. She used to have to get tape put over her mouth when she, the nuns at the school. Right. Right. But that talking, she know how to get things done, and me too, or whatever. That's why when I go to the Capitol, they'll be like, please, you got you got to talk, you got to say something. So the talking come natural, and all that, you know, and the love for people and helping people, just like how David helped me and we help each right. other, whatever. That love for helping people, I think that that go longer, and I think people seeing the true heart and all that. Like, it ain't about the money, because I ain't riding around no Maseratis and I got no big right. house behind no gate. But my passion People feel the passion, so the passion. How much man. you read, bro? How much? How much you read or, or research stuff? I read a lot, or whatever. I, I'm reading Boosie's book now. Um, I read. Um, you gotta read my book too, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm, I gotta read your book. Um, 
I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get you, but I gotta read the black book. <laughs> I got I seen that you put the stuff in a book, your book, yeah. uh, with the um. But when you say you first addressed that with the stuff with uh, the masterpiece stuff, whatever. Right. I speak about you in that too, so you got to check that out. Oh yeah, well I got to read yeah, it. Yeah, so, get it. Nah, he going to get it. He <laughs> got his name in it. His name in it. Oh, he going to read I'm, that bitch. I'm, I'm, he going to skip through that bitch and no, find I'm, GDP. I'm, no, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the whole book. I'm gonna read the whole book. You gonna know I read it because um you gonna be able to tell I read the whole book when right. I read it because yeah. I got to read booby um. Black book and stuff too. But I, right now I read Boosie book across the tracks and stuff like that. But I read a lot of books. I read um, stuff about Malcolm X, uh, Civil right. War books, all kind of shit. Uh, music business books like. So that's why I, I, want, I wanted to bring that up because that's how you get so insightful about some of the stuff you know. You know, you, you know. I want people to, if anybody inspired by GDP, is I want them to know, like, man, this dude really study and research and put the work in. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because some people just think, oh, I could just go blog and do. Now it comes wow. with a little bit more than that. So if anybody inspired by you, I want you, I want them to know that they got to put in some work as well. Yeah, you know? I do a lot of re. I mean, even when I was real younger, um, I used to. I remember. When I was real young and talking about the read stuff, remember back in the day we started like the book club and all that, or the, or the um, book fair, and you mm-hmm. had to buy the real books. This was the good yeah, books, yeah, Ninja sure. Turtles, all the good shit. So, you know, we didn't always have the money to do that. So when we were standing on Tyre Lane, cause we, you know, we lived in the Seven Wall lot in the East, but when we were standing on Tyre Lane, like in 94, 95. Oh, rough time. Yeah, so uh, we going around there. I feel I feel sad. I got an autograph in the, in the mall that day. But anyway, when everybody, my brother, them in Camelot Records that's doing time in prison, in the they stealing, yeah, they stealing like, Mystical CDs, right. they're stealing DG Chopper City CDs, all that kind of stuff. I'm in there stealing Goosebump books. I like the Goosebump so much. RL Stein, I'm stealing books, and I was thinking, I said, "Damn, at least if the police catch me, they're gonna be right. like, well, at least he was trying to read, whatever." Right. So that's what I kept on thinking, whatever. So I was just so infatuated with the covers and and Goosebump books. They didn't really have no pictures. You only got the picture, the cover, and the one on the back. So you got to have a great imagination. But those books took me place. So yeah, that, made me, type of nigga. that made yeah. me that made me want read. Right, right, so right. then my dad used to be saying, "You got to read about Malcolm X and this and that and all that." So my daddy always used to tell me every day I came home, he was like. I don't want to just hear what you ate in the cafeteria. What you learned today? Right. So every day I right. came home, my daddy said, what, what did you learn today? And he yeah, lived that shit. Gotta yeah, have I got to say you something. Gotta have I got to be like, man, what? I'm <laughs> like, 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 like Greg, what you learned today? Whatever now. And I'm like, I got to come up with something. So that's right. that shit right there. It still kept going. What today. you want the people to know you as, man? This shit all said and done. There. I uh, want some them to know that I love where I was from. I love my people. I really gave a fuck. I really did care. My heart was really in it, and I, I led with passion. Right. Always, whatever. Always was passion. Boots on the fucking ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah your boots, boots on, on the ground all the time. Boots on the ground, right. yeah. The main thing is, like, about passion, persistence. That shit, like, that's the, the P in my name, you know, the passion, the persistence. Right. You got to persevere through that shit, and, you know, you got to love what you do. I feel like if you love what you do and people see it, and you genuine, you know, all that shit gonna come. All the things that you probably feel like you deserve, like you say, all the things I did, guess that led up mm-hmm. to these moments, it's gonna all make right. sense. All the hard nights when I probably cried and felt like, man, I was being treated like Cinderella, and you know, I didn't, <laughs> you know, right. motherfuckers ain't appreciate me. I think I was that smart to be like, well, yeah, just be quiet. You ain't got no money. You ain't nobody. Your ideas don't matter, whatever. But now nah, everybody listen when I say. But at one time, it's like, man, you ain't got no money. You ain't nobody. You just just be glad to be here, whatever, and all right. that. Just be glad to be on a, on a bus or on. The boat or in the car, right. but now I could be the captain of the boat. I, I didn't pay my dues, I didn't did all the stuff, so now I could be a general because I was a great soldier right. and I just had to wait for my moment. So once your times come, you step up in the light and you show up and show up. And I, I feel like I want to be remembered by somebody that didn't stop. And you got to just know that on, it's gonna be on God time, not your time. Now that you're saying all that, it and you in it, you blogging and mm-hmm. you saying people, everybody listening, right. Did you think it was easy? It, it was easier doing this shit before you start doing it, and you see now, like man, this shit do take a little, uh, yeah. you know. Well, what I did learn from doing it, first of all, you gotta have tough skin because the people in the comments gonna be on your ass. You gotta learn about the hecklers, the trolls, so you gotta be able to get used to that or whatever. Once you kind of understand, you can't entertain everybody in the comment. You can't let all that because my brother said you will have a hundred great comments and one or two say something bad. We and have whole focus spirit. on that. Yeah. yeah, so you focus on it. Let my brother say just worry about. The good people that love you, you know, the other stuff that's gonna come, LeBron get it, Deion Sanders, your favorite football player, Allen Ives, all of them gonna get that. So I had to learn that and and just being consistent. I had to study looking at 
how the shade room put the pictures in, in the words, uh, looking at how Sean Cotton was using collages. I would have to find the apps they was using because I didn't know. So I feel like when you want to really be good, you're going to look at what all the other people doing and saying, what they doing or what Gaz doing or what this one doing or the shade room or uh, breakfast club. Like, you're going to take a little something from everybody and put your own spin on it. Mm-hmm. But you got to have tough skin. You know, it ain't made, it ain't, it ain't made for the week. for the week, right. Yeah, if you really want to grind and you want that marathon like Nipsey, like Nipsey said, all I did is not quit. You know, like Dolph and him. Dolph said it best. I was, me and my brother-in-law from Memphis because he's from um, Orange Mound with A-Ball MGG from it. He was talking about that the day. He was like, um, uh, Dolph said, if you could take this phone, you could find a way to make yourself a millionaire off this phone. Right. You could do it. You got to just figure out your thing and your niche. And I figured out something that worked for me and it's been working. I just, even though I got three, four pages deleted, I kept coming back. I kept coming back and um, hopefully don't do it again. <laughs> Is, is it a form of figuring it out? Like, I'm figuring it out because the feedback that I get on social media and in, in person? Yeah, yeah. You see the, the love that people say they appreciate. In person? Yeah, you see it, the love. It feel good, huh? Yeah, you see that people appreciate it, and they say, you know, thank you for doing what you're doing. Not just on Instagram talking about hip-hop, but even being out there eight, early in the morning to march with all those older ladies and all those people that's doing that. They don't have nothing to do with uh, what you call it. You know, when the cameras ain't around that much. That mean a lot. So just all those different sides of it that make them see me is just not GDP. They see Gregory Earls. And I want right. them to know that I'm just way much more than just a music exec. I love that. And that's my passion. But I'm more than that. I got a brother that's still in prison. Like, Eve was back there and then go to that same prison. My brother and husband, now he still fight for us. Like, me and the daddy did a lot of time. My mm-hmm. brother was 42. in action. 42 years. Right. Long time. More than I've been living. And my brother asked about me and the daddy. How he doing or whatever? He's still in bonds in in um in a hole right, right, right. twenty three and one or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, they having shit fights right now. <laughs> Man, I'm talking about that's the, yeah, that's the reality of it, bro. And like we talk our shit on the podcast, and that's why we give it to you from all different angles. You know right. what I'm saying? When you go, when you get there, and right. how it is when you get out. Because right, right. we didn't did that time. So, some time don't don't determine. You know, you learning that you could do one year and figure it like. Figure out like some niggas do a year and don't go back. Right. Some right. niggas do forty years and don't go back and go back. Right. It's all on you, bro. And I know niggas gonna get, gonna get tired of being on that hamster wheel doing the same shit when they get tired. Right. 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 I want to say shout out to Jarrett too because I met him through y'all and I got I know he got a lot of love for y'all and he met right. I met him through y'all or whatever too so like I said Jarrett or whatever oh, I just want to say Jarrett, Jay, Jay, awesome, Jay you know or whatever I just want to say that too but that what say that you ain't met you ain't met me say, through um, that's what no no not you I mean I mean the stuff with gas yeah. whatever so I just wanted to just like that was one of the reasons he was mad at me that one of the reasons he was mad at me that was that was that was that was his best friend I was still in his best friend look my father Red said the same thing too he said man. Jarrett with my partner and all that stuff like that, so nigga fuck with gas too hard, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's all love, all love yep, yep. Yeah, Shout it's all love, man. man. Before we get out this bitch, brothers, anything that you want, you want cover, you want to talk about before we get out here that we ain't cover. I want to ask you this too, because me and Jay was talking about this, and you know more about this because you from over. He said when he went to school over here, it was so much politics when he went to like. The Morero schools and Harvey and how it is compared to like outside, because like in the east, you know, you got the goose checkerboard and all that. But it's more. But then on this side, he like it's so divided, so it make it hard with rappers because it's so much the Harvey, uh, LG is or this part or that part. But in, in the east, is like this. Uh, you know, even downtown, uptown got that too. But he said it was real hard being uh, for rappers to make it on this side. He felt like because it's so much of the separation with the different. Neighborhoods are just cities or what you think about that? No, nah, that's a fact and that's how it all started, bro, way back with the gang shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like this neighborhood was blue, this neighborhood was red, and it was divided like that. But then it was starting to change. It's changing now. It's changing now, bro, because the same type of time that these grown ups on these grown folks, it got a lot of people that's doing music starting to be on that same type of time. Like we can't make this shit happen, divided. Niggas starting to learn that, and right. I guess that's one of the reasons why this shit starting to come together too. Right. Cause the old niggas, bro, they like that was the niggas who was into it. They don't give a fuck no more. These young dudes starting to figure it out, you know, themselves to come together, and some not, some still on that bullshit, and that's the ones who be, you know, go to that place and they right. end up like that, right. but. I think that's what, man, because cause you don't even have to get into nobody. I grew up, when I first, first, like, uh, as, as a kid, as a child, I grew up in Gretna and McDonaldville. Okay. And they was Crips. That's all the high schools named as John McDonald, yeah. They, mm-hmm. they was Crips mm-hmm. and shit. And then we moved to Mary Poppins. There was blood. We got through in the lions then. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Out the like, just on the strength of where you from, like, nigga, 
be 19 years old. Like, I ain't you got no problem with nobody. You can't, can't judge off where our uh, parents <laughs> move at. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So that shit been like that, but that's something to talk about with each. So I'm right. glad you brought I'm, I'm right. glad you brought right. that up. Right. You know what I'm saying? But thank you, that's man. What it is, man. It's all thank love, you. nigga. Thank y'all, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Always. No. Oh, and then just before we get out here, mm-hmm. this nigga, this nigga, we got you said you know Turk them had cut the uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. ball out and shit, and that nigga said Turk. You see that too? Yeah. He was capping. So yeah. He was capping. Whoa, Turk ain't saying that? No, when no. you were saying the part that said, when, when Turk, Turk said, it. it's a problem, man, and I could see it, and you was like, Turk, you, you can see, see that, that too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was capping. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fuck with you, though, yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Turk said, Turk, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but see, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, but look, it was funny because I seen what Giggity had said. You know, shout out Turk and him for bringing me on up. But I was like, damn, Turk had opened up the question, him and Beehive, but they didn't come, he ain't come back and try to bring it together because I seen y'all bought him and Juve more closer together or whatever. Right. And I was like, well, damn, like he gonna just leave it like that. Right? <laughs> and like Giggity said, he was like, man, Turk gonna get his point across. And even when y'all asked him at the end, like, do you got anything else you wanna say that, you know? And I was like, well, damn. You know, so that was, that was, <laughs> that was crazy, whatever. But I'm glad, like I said, bro, we was able to. Sit down and rap Frank, a tad and all that and talk about it, whatever. And, and as grown men know that we stronger together, whatever. That's what all grown men do. Right. Right. That's what grown men do, you know. And, and shout and, out to Turk though too. And and yeah. and uh not probably be like direct, right. but that's my nigga. I fuck with him right. and he, he played a part in trying to, you know, right. you know, right. like, you know, align my mind to certain shit. Cause he like a big brother to a nigga. Right. So right. he right. he played a part right. into some of the ways too. So it's all love, big right. brother. Right, 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 right. That's it's what it right, is. Man. Man. Love, man. It was a great episode. I'm glad I was able to Come and find, like I said, man, I've been a fan from the beginning when you was doing it and stuff like that. You still going up and you still consistent. Like I said, you and Mina together, y'all so fire, whatever, because y'all both play off each other like brains and shit like that. The way he yeah. logically, he going to think about it or whatever, and the way you so like raw and just come <laughs> with it. But you need that or whatever. I feel right, like that's what right. make all great podcasts, the yin and the yang or whatever. It's like a two-headed monster. Right, right. right. All we need is you. I might be your spot. GDP slash the record podcast, man. Tuesday, Thursday. I don't know where to find you at, GDP. Uh, Instagram, um, GDP Speaks All Together. And on Twitter, is GD underscore P. And on um, and YouTube, you know, GD, GD on P or whatever. Yeah. That's what it is, man. We just up your doses, man. Keep tuning into this real shit. Podcast medicine. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, I go by gas to hate them, man. I'm Mr. Mina the Instigator. And you already know what to watch. Watch this, don't watch that other shit. Uh, yeah. Nah, y'all not coward. Y'all being real about what y'all doing. So. <laughs> <laughs>